praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day. Thank you all. Good job. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I wouldn't trade them. <laughs> Hallelujah. If these folk can't take you into the presence of the Lord, then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Amen. You have your Bibles this morning. Turn to Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. Mark's Gospel, chapter 10. This is familiar. You all know the story. But, of course, you know I have to do it my way. <laughs> so it's good when you know the story because, as folks say, you can preach right along with it. <laughs> Verse 46 says this. Now they came to Jericho. <clears throat> as they went, as he went on out to Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, uh, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me, which should be all of our cry. Amen. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more. <laughs> Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer. Rise. He is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want? <laughs> I love this me to do for you. The man was blind. <laughs> Which seemed like an obvious question. But not necessarily. <laughs> the blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. He received his sight and he on the road. Amen. I want to talk to you on this subject today, how we receive sight. How we receive sight. Now, somebody say, well, that's a strange title because we know the man was blind and he needed to see. But sometimes your natural sight doesn't line up with your spiritual sight. So we really found out how we matched the two. Amen? You can be seated this morning. <laughs> now, there's a little bit of history that goes along with this. And I hate to start with history because it always gets us in trouble because it takes us to some place that we didn't want to start. The Bible says that Jesus was on the road approaching Jericho, and the first thing we find is that uh, he, he was on his way to go to Passover. Now, we know what, well, maybe we don't. Passover is the celebration uh, of the deliverance of the Jews from the Egyptians. Amen. Incorporated in Passover 
uh, if you look at now, you have to look, and that's why I said text is simply. In Exodus chapter 12, it talks about the Passover. You know, that term Passover is when I see the blood out pass over. But it's also the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And what the Bible teaches us is that uh, folks had to leave in such a hurry, they didn't have time for the bread to rise. So it's also the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. It is a feast that usually takes place for a week. It is the celebration of the new year. If you read in Exodus 12, here we go. Uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, God said to Moses that for you, this will be the beginning of the year for you. Doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. This is your beginning because you, you, you're getting free. This is your deliverance. So the Bible says that uh, this feast of Passover uh, is to be an annual feast and it is to be carried on in perpetuity, forever. And what we're seeing here is that this feast uh, uh, is always celebrated. Well, this year it'd be April 15th is the beginning of Passover. Amen. But it's observed every year. It is a large feast, and uh, during the time that the feast is celebrated, the Bible teaches that during this part in time, uh, Jericho was full of people. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that there were 2,200 priests. And they had them se uh, separated in courses so they could serve because there would be that many people coming in. This is priests and Levites. Now, some of these uh, people lived there and uh, they knew Jesus was passing by, but when they wasn't, <laughs> it doesn't sound strange, when they were not working, <laughs> they were standing in the crowd cheering. Amen. What did I say? 2,200? It's 22,000. I'm sorry. I, Mr. Zero. Mr. Zero. That ain't good in money, is it? <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> they were standing there and they were waiting. Everybody was waiting because they knew that this young ruler was coming through. And this ruler they had heard about. Uh, they didn't know much about him other than the fact that he had worked some miracles and, and the word had gone out. Now, here's the situation. There was a, a, a beggar who was there that particular day. Well, let's not say that. He was there every day. He had a position there at the gate. The Bible teaches us that it was the Northeast Gate and he was there and, and he was getting himself together. Now, for Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, let's talk about Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. That's what, like Simon Barjona is the son of, that's, that's all, okay? We don't know much about him because we don't see that in the Bible. And what we do not know is how long he had been blind. We know that it has been a long period of time. And, uh, and I, see, if I, if I was a, a dramatist like uh, Sister McLemore, I could tell you that on that particular day that he probably got up like any other morning, took his little cloak, which was probably already tattered and torn because that's all he had, got himself together and think about this time of the year in uh, Jerusalem. It's probably cold in the morning, even though it's warm during the day. So we assume that he wrapped himself up and made his way out early because he had to get to his spot. Now think about how many people would be there. So he had to get there early in the morning. And when he got there, uh, we can imagine that he sat there at the gate and he was asking questions because if you're blind, you, that's what you do. And he was saying, what in the world is going on? And I can imagine that... Uh, the only way he could get somebody's attention is probably to grab somebody's coat and say, hey, 
what's, what's going on? And the person probably told him, Jesus is coming back. Amen. Well, Bartimaeus has probably heard some stories about Jesus, like we all have, right. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and when he heard that, something clicked in him. Jesus was coming. This is the guy I heard about. This is the guy that works the miracles. So if he comes by, I get one shot at getting his attention. So I can imagine him yelling out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, Let's go back to the, the story again. Jesus is walking in this crowd like he normally does. Amen. Y'all don't mind me just telling a story, do you? <clears throat> oh, okay. All right. I like telling stories. No, I like telling. No, I was going to say tales. That's just as bad. Ain't it? <laughs> I like narrating events. Y'all tell stories. <laughs> so Jesus is walking along. Now, the, 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 the journey was 15 miles, roughly, from Jericho to Jerusalem. And the Bible says that the custom for the, uh, the rabbis is to walk and teach. So people were gathered around Jesus you know, the, 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 all those priests that were in town for the event, they wanted to hear something from Jesus. Now, this is why they were shushing Bartimaeus. They, uh, Jesus, now son of David, they said, man, shut up, we're trying to hear. And he comes to a third time, and, 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 and they're trying to get in closer so they can hear, and, and he's trying to get the attention of Jesus. Again, he had one shot at this because Jesus was not passing that way again. But keep this in mind. Not only was he not passing that way again, he wasn't going to pass anyway again because he was on his way to the cross. Yep. So Bartimaeus is thinking to himself, hey, if I don't get his attention, there's going to be some problems here. So he says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And I can hear one of the priests say, we're going to have some mercy on you if you don't shut up. And th that's my word. <laughs> that's what y'all would say. Now, come on, that, that's what you... I'm just saying, that's how you would say it. Y'all act, now see y'all all up in church, they're trying to be holy now. You know, if somebody was. Anyhow. So, <laughs> somebody said, make a long story short. No, I make a short story. <laughs> So he yells out one more time. This time, he caught Jesus' ear. Amen. Now, here's the key right here. See, it's one thing for you to hear Jesus. But things turn around when Jesus hears you. The Bible says that Jesus stopped. See, when Jesus hears you, he stops whatever he's doing. I, I think I mentioned to you all yesterday that Jesus is always on his way to do something. Huh? His whole life was on his way to do something. So if you're expected to get anything from him, you better get him on the fly. He stopped. And then, then comes up this word that we understand and don't understand. The Bible says that he told his uh, disciples, call him. Hmm? 
calling. Now, we talked about this last week. Come on, don't disappoint me. We talked about calling. Uh, okay, yeah, act like you know what I'm talking about, even if you don't, you know. Hey. <laughs> Many are called, few are chosen. But, but here's what the Bible says. Let, let, make sure we got it right. It says, Jesus stood still, verse 49, and commanded him to be called. Now, when you are called to do something, it is not for you to argue or dispute or delay or question. You simply respond. Amen. And, 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 and what we see is that, uh, you know, last week I made a big deal about people being called and, and how you have to be, you know, superior and, and, and all of that. And, 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 you know, you understand that the Bible does teach that we appoint people in church to certain positions. Amen. Now, I don't have time to teach that because we taught, about it, taught it last week. Amen. But just in case, Acts chapter 14 and Titus 1. And you'll see that what Paul and, and Barnabas did, you don't go there, I'm just, that they appointed folks in every church that they went to, Amen. he says, appointed elders. Amen. Amen. Look, look it up for yourself because I ain't got time to go there. But here's what, here's what the Bible teaches, is that when you are called, the calling does not matter if you don't have the right response. Now, let's look at what happened to Bartimaeus. And we went through a lot of this all the way down to verse 49. We're doing pretty good today since we only got 52 verses. <laughs> the Bible says here in verse 49 uh, that he called him. And then the Bible says in verse 50, and throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Hmm. Now, keep in mind that Jesus had met many blind people. He wasn't the only one. And there were probably some others in the crowd. Matter of fact, Matthew says that there were two. But only one spoke. Amen. But the Bible says that when he was called, he responded appropriately. The Bible says the first thing he did is he Threw away his cloak. Now, we know that the cloak, of course, we said that's what kept him warm. Right? At night, that was his bedroll. Huh? But during the day, he spread that out so that people could throw money in it. So it was his bank. Huh? What are you trying to say, preacher? I'm trying to say it's, it, it's an important step. When you throw away the thing that is most precious to you, to follow Jesus, to leave behind the one thing that is the means of your survival. Oh, y'all. The Bible says he threw it away. Now, <laughs> I love this. It says, uh, and throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Now, you know, he couldn't do that by himself. Hmm? <laughs> oh, Lord, I, my, my head is full of stuff. <laughs> and I had to look, get it out. He rose, the Bible says. So we know somebody says, let me help you. Hmm. Somebody help me. See, he got it. <laughs> At some point in time, everybody is going to need somebody. 
Amen. Some people say, well, I came to Jesus all by myself. No, you didn't. Let me tell you why I thought you didn't. Because no, if, if there was nobody there but you and the preacher, listen, somebody pushed you to that point that you... See, I, I mean, I don't know who it was, but somebody got you to that place. Amen. Now, remember, we said that Bartimaeus only had one shot at this. Amen. So the Bible says that uh, because this man's, uh, we're going to use that biblical term, importunity, means he kept crying out. <laughs> the Bible said that they helped him and got him to the place. Now, I like this because Bartimaeus was blind. So if they helped him to Jesus, I can imagine, and I can only do this with my wife. Come here, baby. Let me show you something. I don't know about y'all's germs here, but I know about her. The Bible says that in order for them to understand that this blind man was coming to Jesus, he wasn't standing like I am. He was like this. Do you understand that? Because that's how I'm blind. In this age of enlightenment, you know, you can't tell good jokes anymore. You tell a blind people joke, boy, you going to be banished. <laughs> so the Bible goes on to say this. That Bartimaeus' response shows the extent that his vision, his vision, not his sight, his vision was clear. He knew exactly who he was going to, and he knew exactly what he wanted. So even though he didn't have natural sight, he had spiritual vision. Amen? So the Bible says that uh, he thought to himself as he was making his way up there, you know, he was thinking, I, I guess he was. I know what I would be thinking. Hey, you know what? And this is what I tell you all about uh, getting fire insurance. He was thinking to himself, listen, I've been blind for a long time. I've been in the darkness. If nothing happens, I haven't lost anything. And if this works... I've gained everything. Come on, isn't that kind of like salvation? See, this is why I don't understand why people won't try Jesus, because if it doesn't work, what you lost? Hmm? Amen. We know it works. Amen. Here's what I told you yesterday. I want to tell you again today because, uh, yeah, I'm in a good time today. Uh, one of the things that you need to remember is that Remember we talked yesterday about Romans 7 and 8? And y'all remember that? And what I told you is that uh, what's going on inside of every human being is a battle for uh, good and evil or right or wrong is going on inside of you. But here's what happens. What most of us fail to understand is that sin is what activates the battle. Y'all remember the Jerry Curl? <laughs> you had to put that Jerry Curl juice on it. <laughs> so if you didn't activate it, then you wouldn't have no curls. So here's the deal. See, if you... It, now, y'all take this into the context. I'm trying to get it to you. The juice then becomes a sin. Because you want your hair to do something. But if you just got a new hairstyle or cut your hair, 
You wouldn't need the activator. If you could, look, come on, if you could get rid of the sin. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I, I, see, some people might not even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> if you eliminate the thing that creates the problem, the struggle in your life, then you don't have to worry about the struggle. Because once you get rid of the struggle, it's all victory. Got to see how to make that pivot back to where I'm talking about. Now, Bartimaeus knew that there was something in his life that needed to be fixed. And it wasn't just his vision. Oh, y'all are looking at me strange. It wasn't just his vision. The man was a beggar. He didn't have any place to live. He didn't have but one change of clothes. Come on, his life was miserable. See, you think the sin is the only problem in your life. You have more problems than you can count because you are a sinner. Amen. Bartimaeus didn't want to have to get up every morning, shake the hay off his little cloak and go out and then spread it on the ground and come back the same thing. You know that when he was begging, he wasn't just begging for money. You know he probably said, can you spare a piece of bread? Huh? Drink of water. Amen. The man was, come on. Amen. See, when our condition is blind, it's not just that we can't see naturally. The problem is, is that we don't do anything that's normal and we don't do anything without help. Amen. So here, here we go. Jesus calls him. He obeys. The Bible goes on to tell us that when he called him, the Bible says that Jesus already knew that this guy was ready. Now, let me tell you something. Here's a quote that you can put in your notes. Desperate people don't permit the crowd to keep them from Jesus. Desperate people don't let a crowd keep them from Jesus. Desperate people don't let a crowd keep them from Jesus. I'm talking to all y'all who come from a big family. I'm talking to all y'all who had all these friends. Let me tell you something. Everybody has to make an individual decision. And if you're depending on, on your friends to support you, you're going to find that that's not going to work. You have to make the decision for yourself. Everybody's going to have to do it. It's an individual decision. Amen. Let me keep on with the story. Amen. So the Bible says that, 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 that what uh, Jesus did was a desperate, I mean, what uh, Bartimaeus did. He threw his cloak away. He trusted Jesus. And the Bible says that when he got to the point that he could talk to Jesus one-on-one, -on -one, Jesus had a question for him. Now, I think that uh, uh, most of us, when we have an opportunity to, to, to get to Jesus, get close to Jesus, uh, <laughs> we have a tendency to get tongue-tied. Hmm? Now, somebody say, well, you know, hey, man, I mean, you know, if I'm in front of Jesus, Jesus say, what can I do for you? I'm going to tell him. I know exactly what I need. Do you really know what you need? See, that's why Jesus asked him the question. He, he says, do you, do, do you really know what you're asking and who you're asking? Huh? He says, what can I do for you? Now, I remember, y'all, if some of y'all remember that we had a, a, a revival and had an evangelist that was healing people. And you see, everybody remembers the story. And, and, and man came in with a cane. And the evangelist said, do you want to get rid of that cane? You want to walk? And he said, no, sir. And he says, why not? Don't you want to be healed? He says, nope, 
I'll lose my disability. There's a number of people here who remember the story because they were here Amen. when it happened. Amen. But do you understand that not everybody thinks? Yes. Huh? Bartimaeus could have said, you know, I need a million dollars. I'll hire somebody to see for me. <laughs> Y'all funny. Y'all funny. Y'all funny. I heard one man say, if I was Stevie Wonder's manager, I'd I put the same outfit on, on him every day. <laughs> For breeze him up and dress him up. <laughs> Y'all stop. That ain't funny. That, that ain't funny. <laughs> Anyhow, come on now. <laughs> Bible says that he didn't hesitate. See, some people, what they do is when you ask that question, they answer this. They say, well, I'll wait until I've done with this and oh, I'll wait until I finish that. Or, uh, there are certain things in my life that I need to get right. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll worry about the, the seeing at some other point in time. Now, everybody says, well, no, that's just crazy. I'd ask for my sight. That is not the case because I have seen people who thought that the solution to their problem was money. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, y'all say, well, I don't know enough people, Pastor. Sure you do. Here's the person that works all the time, two jobs, always trying to have something. Amen. And then one day, the doctor says, well, your heart's gone. And he says, well, doc, can you fix it? And he says, no. Now, how much money would change your life? You know, uh, I forget the old preacher used to say that uh, if, if money can fix it, it ain't a problem. Mm -hmm. See, if it's a real problem, money won't do anything with it. There are a lot of inconveniences. Amen. And folks say, well, you know, if I had enough money, I'd be happy. Now, somebody said money won't buy happiness. <laughs> no, but you can rent it. <laughs> I know it ain't going to last, but. <laughs> bottom is, yeah, bottom is. <laughs> Woo. So he says, Jesus wanted to test bottom is his faith. So as an, exp as an expression of his faith, he says, uh, 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 what do you really want from me? And Bartimaeus didn't waver in his response. He said this. He said uh, that I might receive my sight. Yes. Now, uh, listen, that response is a response of faith. Yes. Somebody said, why is that a response of faith? Because he's talking to Jesus. And he said that I might what? What? I don't act like you're scared. What? You can't receive something from somebody that ain't got it. Huh? He said that I might. I know you got it. That is his, his confession of who Jesus was. I know who you are. Notice that the Bible says that three times he called him. He said, uh, 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 
thou son of David, three times. But when it came to his healing, what did he call him? Rabboni. See, son of David was his national title. Everybody calls him that. Everybody calls him that. Huh? But when he needed to have a personal encounter with Jesus, he called him by a personal name, Rabboni, that I might receive. I know you got it. Wait a minute. My sight. Y'all got that? Cut. No, that's good. Mm. Now, most people won't get it till tomorrow. I understand that. Because they say, well, that don't mean nothing. Yeah, it means everything. It's, it's your, look, it's your confession. It's your confession. If you don't become explicit in what you're asking for, you will not get what you're asking Are you still with me? So he says that I might receive my sight. Amen. So the Bible goes on to say this, that we need to be able to articulate our faith. I need to be able to say it. Huh? Now, he could have also said this, and this is how most of us do it. Most of us say, Lord, I want to be healed. I mean, that. Come on, y'all. That's what we say. Lord, I want to be healed. Well, then we understand something. And Jesus is explaining it right here. In verse 52, he says, then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. The Bible says that that word translates whole. Made you whole. Your faith relates to your wholeness. If I can believe God, I can receive my wholeness. I can be complete in him. Amen. The Bible says that he told him, go your way. Come on. The implication was that as I'm speaking to you, your eyes are being opened so that you can see. You now have a personal relation, a revelation of who I am. I didn't have it, you know, when I had him get me up and all that, but when I got to it and he spoke, when he spoke my eyes, I tell you, I'm glad y'all know this story because it sure makes it easy. So the secret of the man's success, uh, receive your sight, was your faith has healed you. The Greek word save, sozo, means to make whole. So the Bible says there's a double entendre there. It means that faith is the key to wholeness. So Bartimaeus, and we're going to summarize these things. I got them all listed here somewhere. Yeah. Says that he was shown this, this. First, he was shown that he was made whole by his going. That's the first thing. People who won't come to Jesus won't receive anything from him. Now, it doesn't matter how much you know about him. Second, he says, by his belief that Jesus was the Messiah. That's why he changed his, his, uh, person, uh, his pronoun to a personal pronoun by saying Rabboni. Then we see that the, uh, the third thing is by persevering against the opposition. This is probably the hardest one. You're going to have to fight your way through Amen. all the naysayers. Amen. Let, me, let me go on. Let me go on. Let me go on. Number four, by casting away everything that hindered you. Now, you notice the, the, the fact that Jesus, I mean, that uh, Bartimaeus got up. But he didn't pick up the cloak when he got up. Yeah, let me try it one more time. When he got up. Somebody said, well, that don't mean anything. How was he going to find his way back to the cloak? That's number one. 
But number two, you think he was the only person that needed a cloak? And you think out of a thousand and thousand of people, they were all honest people. Well, that, that's Bartimaeus' cloak. And if something happens, we're just going to hold on to it for him. He knew. Come on, stay with me. He says, uh, number five, by obeying Jesus when he was called. Remember what I said, just because you're called doesn't mean you have to respond. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will respond. So many people have been called to this or that and just did not take the calling. Listen, anybody who's called to do something, can I just soapbox for a moment? If you're called to do something and you don't want to do it, okay, here it is, here it is. <laughs> you will never be anointed Amen. to do that. Amen. And then here's what I hear in my head. But pastor, you know the gifts and calling are without repentance. That's exactly right. I said you would never be anointed to do it. I didn't say you wouldn't have the call. Okay, let me try it this way because some people don't get what I'm saying. How many people have uh, been called to ministry, started their own churches, but they wasn't called to that particular ministry. And then the church folded. Oh, that's never happened? Hmm? You may be called to pastor but you may not be called to pastor your own church. Mm -hmm. I always say like this, okay? I'm running out of time. Practice your pastoring at home. You can pastor the house. You can pastor the whole world. Huh? No, no, seriously. I used to tell people all the time, listen, rules of business are very simple. Very, very simple. If you master the rules, it doesn't matter if you're running a, a, a fruit stand or you're running General Motors. The principles don't change. They don't change. They do not change. One dollar is still one dollar. Do you understand that? We always think, well, you know, I, I got to have something big. I got to have something spectacular. No, you, 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 if you learn the rules of management, you can deal with the. I, I got to finish. I got one more here. One more. One more. The last, number five was obeying when Jesus called. But six, this is the one that I haven't gotten to yet. Number six. Because I hadn't said much about it. And I need to talk about this one just a minute or two. Number six is about following Jesus and praising him after he was healed. Now, the Bible says that immediately he obeyed. Come on. The Bible says that uh, when he obeyed, then he had overcome the last barrier to coming to Jesus. What is that? It's called loyalty. Bartimaeus could have gotten up. Man, I can see. I'm going back to school. I'm going to get my master. I'm going to open up. <laughs> Y'all keep looking at me funny. I'm going to tell you something. Most people, when they receive a blessing from Jesus, they think that that's for them, and they start to use it for them. You know, I've seen people who got new cars and then wouldn't come to church. Don't I mean, I've seen it Amen. and then lose the car and wonder how they lost the car. Yeah, because the Bible says that when Jesus heals you, when he makes you whole, it is for the purpose of following him. Amen. Not them. Amen. 
too many of us, when we get a blessing, you know, all right, here I go. I got to say this fast because I'm running out of time. But as a pastor, I can tell you that most people who receive a financial blessing think about the church last, and most of the time they broke when they remember the church. You will find that we get more bounced checks during tax season because people got a refund and overspent. So, so they wrote a check, this, that, and other. By the time it gets to us, ain't no money left. All right. I'm smiling because some of y'all act like it ain't you. <laughs> Say it out loud, did I? <laughs> I just thought about that as I played it back in my head. I said, I didn't say that. <laughs> so Jesus restored his vision so that he could have his physical sight to match his spiritual sight. Amen. <laughs> Well, y'all, I'm telling the truth. I, I, don't get upset with me because I'm telling the truth. Mm. <laughs> you have to be willing. I'm closing now. You have to be willing to leave everything behind to follow Jesus. Having received the sight, the Bible says, that he followed Jesus. He didn't selfishly go on his own way when his need was met. This is what we have to remember. Just because you got your need met don't mean that you can do your own thing. Hmm? So here it is. Final word. He began with need. He was blind. He went on to gratitude. He was grateful because he was healed. But he finished with loyalty which means he served. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? And isn't that exactly what we expect from a disciple of Christ? Yes. Amen? Yes. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1 and 8, it says, whom having not seen, you love. Yes. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, yes. you rejoice with joy inexpressible, full of glory. See, one day we're going to experience what Bartimaeus did. There's going to be a wholeness that comes into our life. But when we're made whole, we're made whole to serve. Amen? Amen. Come on, stand up on your feet. another amazing word. Listen, guys, we pray that you got something out of this today, but maybe there might be someone who's watching me right now who has not yet had the opportunity to, to accept Christ as your personal savior. I want to personally extend the invitation to you. It's as simple as ABC. First, admit that you're a sinner. Secondly, believe that Christ died for your sins. And thirdly, confess that he is Lord over your life. If you're interested in doing that, I want you to join me in this prayer right now. It's a simple prayer. We're all going to pray it together. All the Dayspring family along with you, okay? And all you have to do is repeat after me, all right? Here we go. Say, Father, forgive me, a sinner. I have missed the mark. I believe that you gave your life just for me. I believe that you rose from the grave just for me. And I believe that I can have eternal life in you. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much to give your very life for me. And now I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart, that when Jesus was raised from the dead, I am saved. 
Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the kingdom family, guys. It's just that simple. You're in. Your ticket has been punched into heaven. Listen, we are rejoicing along with the angels at the at the uh, the 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 sound or the the excitement of a family member returning home. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us today, I need you to do me a favor. Please make sure you text the word "save" to the number here on the screen. Okay. And what that'll do, uh, we're not trying to bug you or spam you or anything like that, and we won't sell your information. Okay, we want to connect with you and make sure that you have somebody that you can connect with on this faith journey. We want to send you some information. Uh, we want to get you plugged into uh, some resources that can help you as you grow on this faith journey. Listen, this is, a, a, a I often say, a single man's journey that is not meant to be walked alone, okay? What does that mean? It means that we have to answer only for what we do. We don't have to answer for what anybody else does. But listen, we need partners in this journey, okay? We need encouragement, we need reinforcements, we need prayer partners, and that's what we wanna be for you. And listen, if you're looking for a church home and you're in the local area of New Bern, come check us out. Maybe we're not your cup of tea. Let us know and we'll help you find what your cup of tea is. We don't mind. It's not about numbers for us. It's about kingdom. So wherever you need to be to feel comfortable and grow so that you can live a kingdom life, that's all we're concerned about, all right? Well, family, that's all the time we have for today. I got to go. Uh, I've enjoyed this time with you. We pray that you have enjoyed this time and gotten a lot out of this that you could take with you throughout the week. We can't wait to get with you again. You guys have an amazing week. And just by case your week is not so amazing, Make sure it has an amazing you in it. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you next time.